Welcome back everybody. Today we are continuing my Subnautica tips and tricks series discussing something that hasn't been covered really in depth so far from what I've been able to find and that is gardening. So today welcome to your Subnautica guide to gardening or if you wish to call it gardening 101. Okay so while you see right in front of me here I have a nice little gardening platform and you can see with it being nighttime, how many of these plants are bioluminescent? Let's talk about the two different types of plants. The main two types are, of course, water based or aquatic plants, and then land based terrestrial plants. This, of course, plays a role in where you are able to actually plant these plants, whether it's an exterior grow bed or alien containment, or in an interior, uh, interior grow bed or a grow bed up on a, the land. But I want to break it down a little differently from that. Let's take it a step further and break it down into three more groups. First group, edible plants. Obviously, this is plants that you can eat either the whole plant or a part of the plant and gain some kind of positive nutritional effect. Second group would be utility plants. Most of this will be plants that you use as fabrication materials to produce new items or items that are going to be used as further materials for producing other items. There's also plants that perform some kind of utility function, so they will fall in this group as well. Then your third group is your decorative plants. These are plants that are found throughout the world that are purely cosmetic as of this moment, this current version of the game. They can be harvested and placed in exterior grow beds or interior grow beds for decoration purposes. But beyond the decoration element, they provide no function at this time. So starting off, let's look at the plants you're going to be looking around for most often. You're going to need the widest variety of these plants, and that's the utility plants. So right here, as you can see in this exterior grow bed, I have first the acid mushrooms and blood vines. Now these are both used for fabrication purposes, and you can see how much space they take up these take up one by one, these take up two by two, so you can only plant fewer of these in here, which means if you put a set of blood vines and filled the whole container up with blood vines, that would mean you only would get six plants, whereas with this, you could get 24, the mushrooms. Okay, here we have the pygmy bulb bush and creep vines, which are both again used for fabrication purposes okay here we have the deep shrooms which are used uh and creating hydrochloric acid i think it is and then the eye stalks now we have gel sacs and ghost weed here we have the purple brain coral which you may be wondering why with most of these others so far have been for fabrication purposes why are these here for utility and that's because they produce oxygen and therefore can be a utility plant that you could put in a you know way down in a exterior grow bed somewhere where you just want to be able to swim down and grab oxygen quickly and then we have the sea crown which is used in fabrication and last we have the tiger plant now i haven't been able to confirm this but i have seen videos of people using it and i have a feeling at some point they will make it a little bit more effective for that but you can plant these at distance from you or if you were wearing the reinforced dive suit plant it without worry but use these for defenses against aggressive fish or you know aggressive uh, fauna such as leviathans and such I'm not sure if they can kill them but from my understanding at some point they were able to actually inflict damage and cause them to move away but I treat it as a utility plant because it does possibly give us the only option we may ever have in the game of a defensive turret. Okay, now, when you think of edible plants in this game, mostly you think of the plants that you grow indoors or on the surface up in the air. However, there are plants that do function as edible food sources that can be grown underwater. And those are creep vine, the pygmy bulb bush, and gel sacs. All of these can actually be consumed for nutritional value, though not by a lot. You can see here, the gel sac just picked up cleanly by itself provides me with five food and four water. And now I have the bulb bush sample, which 
while it says it's old, it will provide me food still, more water than food, and of course then we have our creep vine sample, which will provide some food. Now obviously these are not the best food sources or water sources, but they do function as that if need be. Okay, so continuing on with the aquatic plants, now let's take a look at all of the plants you can get that are currently only for decorative purposes. These are simply cosmetic and at this moment do not provide any function beyond that that I am aware of in the game. Starting with that, we have the cave bush, the blue palm, the furled papyrus, Gabe's feather, we have the jelly shroom, the membrane tree, we have the pygmy fan, which kind of looks like a one-sided Venus flytrap, really. The red wart and the regress shell. We have the rogue cradle, the spiked horn grass, the spotted dock leaf, veined nettle, violet bow, and writhing weed. So that wraps up all of our aquatic plants for the utility, the edible, and the decorative. Now it's time we take a look at our terrestrial indoor plants. One difference between the aquatic plants and the terrestrial plants, obviously other than where they grow, is that we have far fewer terrestrial plants in the game. With this being themed around the planet being a water world, there is a rarity to above sea level uh, land mass, which means that we have far fewer plants that survive in the open air surface levels. So we really don't have any utility terrestrial plants at the moment. We just have edible and decorative. So starting with the bubble tree, it provides a very significant source of water as well as food. So here is a very good plant to have. You can see I can plant four in one planter or I can plant one in the little planters. Moving on, we have the Chinese potato, which is the same. You can plant four per grow bed and this provides a very good source of food and some water. You can also plant one in each of the little uh, smaller planters. Here is the lantern fruit. Now it does not produce, it does not provide you with a lot of food or water per, uh, per fruit that you pick, but the fruit grows quickly. So some people prefer this as their go-to food source because it replenishes so easily. And again, you can plant either four in one grow bed or you can plant one in a standalone planter. And here we have my favorite food source, the marble melon. You eat one of these, you get a large amount of food and water. You can plant 16 in a single indoor grow bed. When you harvest one of these with a knife, it gives you four seeds, meaning you can eat three and then replace the fourth, use the fourth one to replace the whole row. You can also plant them in the uh, standalone planters. And while it may look leaf wise, like it's only one uh, marble melon, it's actually four. Okay, now we have the terrestrial decorative plants. The ones that are for decoration right now that don't serve any other purpose. Uh, you have the fern palm going in alphabetical order. Then you have the grub basket, which you see uh, is two by two. Uh, Jaffa cup is also two by two. So all of these will only be able to get up to four in a grow bed. Here is the Ming plant. And then you have the small pink cap, which you can, you know, the little mushrooms, you can put them in. They look kind of spread out for some reason. I don't know why they, these grow this way and these kind of almost grow in a row. But you can get, these are one by one, so you can get eight of them on the side or 16 total if you want. You also have the speckled rattler, which is the one one by one, and then the voxel shrub, which are one by one, and you can plant those. These, of course, will also fit into wall mount planters if you wish to do that as well, because again, these are purely for cosmetic purposes. Okay, so now that we've covered all the different ones in the game, both uh, terrestrial and aquatic plants, you can see how some of these are really useful to have, maybe one or two of just in case they do in a future update turn some of these direct decorative ones into utility plants, something that is required as a uh, piece of something else for fabrication. And then you have these others that currently are being used for fabrication purposes, and you'll want to have a good number of them 
at a certain point, especially certain ones that you may need on a regular basis, such as the acid mushrooms for producing batteries. You don't have to do a lot of craziness to build these. Uh, you can see how large this platform is and has been very easy to cram a whole bunch of these on there. I probably could have just done a single side, but it would have been a little bit more difficult to have it spread out, easier to show off. But if you are building just to plant and grow your garden, you could do this on just one row, or you can even build them on top of other structures, such as your multi-purpose rooms, your... Uh, scanner rooms everything like that if it's got a surface up top you could pretty much go up top and plant or you know use this as additional room for planting uh your garden and growing the supplies you need now an important note is some of these will don't produce everything that the wild counterpart produces and you see blood vine is a little different it you know you could pick up some blood oil down here at the bottom uh, as far as the creep vine, though, all you'll be able to get is the creep vine samples. You won't be able to actually get any of the, uh, the creep vine sacks that you need for, like, lubricant and such. Now, one last thing to note. Technically, if you want to consider it in this regard, every single plant in the game is a utility plant in that each of these will provide power for at least a short duration using a bioreactor. However, if you're gonna rely on plants to fuel your bioreactor, you need to be someplace where there's just no fish at all because almost every fish is gonna provide far more power for a longer duration than any of the plants will. And again, I always recommend getting a Reginald because they provide the best balance of power and duration along with how easy they are to find in the game early off as well as how quickly they can reproduce in an alien container okay everybody i hope you enjoyed the video and if it, you did be sure to hit that like button also make sure you hit subscribe and tick the notification bell to keep up with all my content during the week you can also follow me on facebook and twitter to keep up with everything if you like as well if you enjoyed the video or if the video helped you be sure to leave a comment below also be sure to leave a comment below if you've got some extra tips you'd like to add so that anybody who watches the video later on can see those tips. Thanks for watching again. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time.